Welcome back to Jalen and Jacoby. Jalen, our next guest, absolutely killed my Knicks on Sunday. Yeah. It is John Collins of the Atlanta <laughs> Hawks joining us on the program. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us in the middle of a playoff run. What's, what's going on, y'all? I, I got to get the people what they want, man. I'm happy to be on with y'all. I'm happy to be on. Happy to Thank be on. Thank you, family. We appreciate <laughs> the love. Thank we you for joining We are happy us. to have you yes, sir, on. Yes, sir. That game between the Hawks and the Knicks was the most exciting game of the playoffs thus far, partial, part, sure. partly due to the environment in that building. What was it like in the Garden on Sunday? No, it was electric. You know, I played in the Garden a couple of times in my short NBA career up to this point. Um, obviously my first playoff game ever. Uh, so it was electric in there and I definitely was trying to feed off the energy. Um, the Knicks as well as us, you know, we haven't been around fans like that all year. So I, I was juiced up. John, Jacoby and I were together watching the game. And as he mentioned, he's a Dizzy Knicks fan. I got family in Atlanta. And all I was doing was this the whole game. Because <laughs> Ice Trey was out there, brr on him. Yo. So yo. What, what are the Hawks who get a chance to see him perform on a daily basis, Trey Young, what is it like now to see him in the playoffs and play on the big stage like he did in game one? Uh, for me, it's right up his alley. You know, just me being around Trey, uh, what he does, his skill, his work ethic, you know, um, his mentality for the game. You know, he lives for these moments or, or that moment, specific moment at the end of the game. Um, you know, those are the type of thing, you know, moments, like I said, he steps up for and seeing him um, do what he does in the clutch, you know, um, it's, it's impressive, and he does it time and time again. So you, you got no choice but to but to be a little cold. Yeah, yeah right. You got to be a little cold, baby. Like Gucci. Got to. <laughs> well, one of the keys to your victory in game one was the way that you guys defended Julius Randle. What is the plan to continue to limit him in game two? No, yeah, you got to make everything tough with Julius. Uh, obviously, he's had a great year. Um, really changed his game in a lot of areas and really almost become sort of a jump shooter um, in a sense. So uh, just a matter of, you know, contest contesting everything he gets, making everything tough for him and uh, just, you know, making the battle the entire 48 minutes, you know, not making anything easy for him. What about the influence of Nate McMillan? You guys got healthy. Bogdanovich came back. Obviously, Hunter came back for the playoffs. I really like what you guys are doing with your front court, with y'all depth and also to go with Capella. So talk about Nate's influence on this team. Nate's been huge. Uh, and, you know, I feel like every every statistical thing you can go to, morale, um, you know, Nate, Nate, you know, we're rallying behind him right now. And I feel like it's, it's all working for the best. You know, he's coming in, you know, it's a very tough situation to come in and uh, become a new coach in the middle of the season, uh, try to manage all the Eagles, you know, all the, the new plays. And especially with this year again, with COVID and all the struggles that we've had to go through a lot on his plate, so uh, I've been very impressed with him and how he's been able to um, win and also handle just the stress of becoming a new coach. So um, we're all behind Coach Nate. He's big on believe, and we're, we're going to keep believing for him. John, you've had a great season. You're now making an impact in the playoffs, and it's a good time to do it because you're going to be a free agent. What will influence your decision as to where you play next season? You know, um, it's, it's, it's going to be a mix of everything. You know, I've had, you know, the whole year to really think about my decision. Uh, I don't know how many more times I can say I want to be in Atlanta and want to stay in Atlanta. You know, I feel like I've built something here or started to build something here with a young core, a group of guys that, you know, um, I've built relationships with as well as the city. But I understand this is a business at the end of the day. I've just been trying to keep it as professional as I can and understand that, you know, all options are open, even if they might look like they're not, you know, at, at mm -hmm. certain times. So I've just been trying to not let that cloud um, anything that has me on the court, you know, anything that has to do with the, the basketball side of things and just keep it pushing and, you know, sort of cross the bridge when we get there, Jacoby. You've been one of the more exciting young players in the league this year. And our producers, please put that man highlights back up there. <laughs> what has it been like for you this year, the way you've been dunking on people, the way your game has improved, and now you're playing quality minutes for a playoff mm. team that has a legit opportunity to advance? No, I appreciate that first and foremost, Jay. It uh, means a lot coming from yourself, so uh, much respect and love. Thank but you. it feels great, man. You know, this is you know this is what I do. I wake up every morning, I lift, you know, I, I bust my butt and uh, just try to do the best that I can to 
to do this on a nightly basis, um, improve my worth that, you know, I am one of the elite players in this league, high caliber players in this league. And, um, you know, my at the end of my career, I want to have a Hall of Fame career. I want to be able to say that I'm a Hall of Famer. So um, I understand that there's a lot of work that needs to be put in to say something like that. And I'm just willing to continue to do what needs to be done. You know what I mean? I have an extremely important question about this playoff series that I'm so invested in. What is going on with Gallo's hair? What, do you know that was going to happen? Like, what, he just popped up with a mohawk? Like, how did the locker room react? Like, what is going on? <laughs> hey, 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 man. Hey, listen, let's play off Gallo, baby. Hey, I'm not saying nothing about my man. He's rocking it with the swag, with the style. Yeah, he is. Hey, you know, he's back in New York City. You gotta, yes. you know, we gotta, we gotta do the, gotta do the damn thing. Gotta, gotta be fresh and clean in his own way. So, shouts out to, to Mohawk. Got I love yes, how you guys have built out your front court depth. But I want to ask you another thing. A shout year out to ago, absolutely. A year ago, George Floyd was murdered by law enforcement in Minnesota, and I want to make sure we do a one year memorial of his death to remind people of cases like this that continue to still happen. And After going to uh, OT in game one, I'm talking a 34-point beatdown. Giannis put up 31, 13, and 6. As for Jimmy Butler, he wasn't looking like Jimmy Buckets last night. Take a listen. I don't think nobody's embarrassed. I think that's just part of the game. They just whooped that tail. They did. Um, but, you know, you, you put this behind us. We got two days to get ready for this next one. I mean, I, I think you kind of got to just leave it at that. I don't think, you know, frustration is going to change anything. I think you just got to compete a lot harder, do things the right way. But all in all, we realize we lost this game together. We went down. We are down 0-2. We're down 0-2 together. And whenever we get home, we're going to be together whenever we play game three. That chain, though, really would complete my luck. Uh, Stephen A., is Butler to blame for the game two blowout? I'm going to blame him for it because I'm not talking about him just as a player. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about him as a leader. Enough's enough of this nonsense. Let me tell you something about Jimmy Butler. This brother is as real and authentic as it gets. He's a rough rider. Yeah. He's a star in this league. Okay? I believe in him. I believe if the Philadelphia 76ers had Jimmy Butler, they might win the championship. That's how I feel this about year. I'm No, I'm talking about last year. Yeah, when, yeah, you know, in the, you, the, the previous two years. You know, he left. When they lost in Game 7 to Toronto, I think if they had come back last year, I think they could have made some real, real noise with Jimmy Butler. I believe in this brother, okay? And we saw what we saw from him in the playoffs, particularly in the NBA Finals. He shot four for 22 in game one. He shot four for 10 last night. And Jimmy Butler's, uh, it, it, it has to stop. This is Jimmy Butler. Numbers don't matter. You know, at the end of the day, it's about winning. I appreciate that because remember with Russell Westbrook, I took the opposite point of view. The numbers, you know, it, it, a similar point of view. The numbers don't necessarily matter because I know you could do that already. Now you got to be winning instead of going home in the first round. In the case of Jimmy Butler, yo, bro, you the star. You the face of the franchise. You the face of the franchise. Enough of this, okay? This is the franchise that Zoe and Shaq and D-Wade and LeBron and those cats were at. You the new standard. And the reality of the situation is, is that Jimmy Butler, Jimmy Butler, has to show up and be Jimmy Butler. Enough of this passive stuff. Enough of this fitting in. You a star, okay? You might not be a superstar, because like I said, there's levels to this LeBron. And guys like that are on another level, but damn it, you showed, especially in the NBA Finals, that you're on an elevated level when you want to be. You got to want to be every night come playoffs. Enough of this 4 for 22 shooting or 4 for 10 and finishing with 10 points and we just trying to get things right. You Jimmy freaking Butler. Enough's enough. Stop playing. Because damn it, you know me, Max. He wants to go to Miami. Yeah, That's <laughs> what this is all about. You know me, when we were on the call, you know let me, me just say one Come thing on, I want to get to you. We're Come on the call. He's right. like, I want to talk about Jimmy, but I that's knew it that's right that's away. That's that's I knew you so that's well that you got to fire him up because you want to be in well, South Beach. This is about well, you. I appreciate the fact that you know me so well. Mommy. I do. I appreciate Thank you so much. I'm very flattered. Bottom line I is, I mean, I ain't playing. I mean, enough's enough. You better pack your bag. He's not trying to fire up any other squad. You're going from Miami. I mean, come on. Here in New York with the Nets, 
to either Philly or Milwaukee. So yeah, make your yeah. travel plans. I understand. Now, I understand. But let it be because they beat you, not because you walking around. I'm just trying to tell you who to blame. You ain't fit when he does Jimmy call Butler. people out at work take sometimes, over. I got to give him that. Take over. Let me tell you who to blame. Okay. Okay? Because you're looking for someone to blame in case you don't go to Miami. And it's not Jimmy Butler. Although I can't disagree with your point, basically. Butler's got to play better than that. I'm sure he knows. Yes, the he, heart knows. Soul he knows. He knows. But Jimmy Butler can't guard everyone. <laughs> Bryn Forbes can't miss from the outside. All the shooters are hot. He can't guard everyone. He can't be everywhere. But you know who does make decisions if you're looking for someone to blame? Eric Spolstra. Now, wow. Eric Spolstra makes decisions like... Burying Tyler Hero on the bench. Remember what Tyler Hero did in the playoffs last year? He was a superstar. Now, I understand Kendrick Nunn is starting with, and then Dragic, he's the third string. Mm -hmm. Hero's playing 10 minutes. He didn't play very well, but 10 minutes? How are you going to get a rhythm in 10 minutes? This dude can take you there. I think Spolstra, who is known.